Welcome to day two of the Overwatch League playoffs live from Toronto, Canada. I'm Golden Boy, your host, and it's been an absolute blast here. You guys have been amazing all day long. Give yourself a round of applause. Incredible, incredible stuff. Now, here's the thing. We had a shocking start to this competition. A lot of wild things happen. And if there's one thing that I know for certain is that all of our teams are hungry because this is elimination day. Everything is on the line here. Your journey to the championship could end here and now. And with these boys being hungry, I think they gotta eat. So let's go ahead and bring them out. champions. They had a tough first half of the season, but when they found their groove on the Reinhardt composition, they have been on fire. Running through the Western play-ins, they took down the teams like the San Francisco Shock, the Vancouver Titans, the Toronto Defiant. None of them could deal with Hadi's signature Reinhardt, and now they're fighting for survival against their fearful opponents. And their opponents! The Atlanta Rain! These guys, you might think they're villains, but they're coming to take it all. I don't think they care much about how anyone else feels. They're here to win like they were able to do in the midseason madness. Top to bottom stacked with stars. This team's been the favorite from the beginning for a reason. And even though their backs are against the wall, they've been in situations like this before. You cannot count them out. I think this is going to be a very good match for the Atlanta Rain. All right, all right, all right. The stage is set. We're ready to go. What do you think, Toronto? How you feeling right now? Oh, guys, it's the first match of the day. Toronto, how we feeling right now? That's what I love to hear. Now let's get ready and send this banger match up back to your casters. It's Uber and Mr. X. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. The dawn of the second day and the gear team shudders with anticipation. We're sending two teams home today. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, obviously yesterday a big shocking uh, loss there for the Atlanta Reign. They don't seem to be the crowd favorites here uh, in Toronto. Uh, and I think they're in a little bit of a dangerous matchup here. You know, London, we know what they're going to do. They're going to play Reinhardt comps. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, they're going to keep playing it. Always uh, the dangerous matchup, right? Because right? it, it, it's like, you know, you're Symmetra TPing around. You got the Bastion. Not any other team plays like this, right? So hard to, you know, get some good game plans against it. Boston Uprising has been really good against uh, the London Spitfire as of late. Pretty good matchup for them early on, but maybe not as good for the rain. That is a game plan you can replicate to some degree, though. We saw the Atlanta Rain take on the Spitfire right at the start of the summer stage. Yeah. And London were playing a similar style. You have to think it was foreshadowed a little bit on the desk that these are recent, these Genji compositions can run rings around that less mobile outside of TP use composition of the Spitfire. We're going to be starting on Ilios, everybody, and expect much the same from this London squad at times. We have seen Hardy try Diva, try Winston on Lighthouse, but I think uh, London are pretty much stuck in their ways from here on out. Yeah, I mean, that's not happening here, right? Uh, for me, what's scary is, is London comes in, you're kind of playing with house money. Like, nobody expected them to be here, right? They get through the LCQ, they play a weird style compared to everybody else. This Atlanta Rain team, since the beginning of the season, has been expected to win everything. Uh, to be in this type of situation, there is a ton of pressure on them. Starting things off with a 
loss down to our lower bracket. Not with the Atlanta Rain expected to find themselves. Every player on this team, with the exception of Donghak, of course, a roll star this year. Why did you have to do my boy Donghak like that? Worth pointing out, I thought. Do it for Danny. Do it for Danny. Out of the gates we come, everybody. It all starts here on Lighthouse, and the Atlanta Rain a little bit quicker off the mark here. It'll be Donghak on the Doom Fist against Hardy's signature rhyme. You guys should have saw Danny's first t shirt drawing. That one would have been a crowd favorite. <laughs> uh, we get a TP here from London straight to the point they want to play this bunker style, especially with the May. Donghak already comes calling here. A little bit of a mutual knockdown between him and Hardy straight into power block as Hardy sleeps. Field around the connected Dar from across the map here as Donghak wants to get a bit of space. Immortality Field already deployed here, a lot of pressure on Landon already. Field follows up again, first the sleep, then the bio. Yeah, and the Doomfist is like one of the only tanks, really the only tank that can get in and get out. So try and play this here against this composition, especially when you have the Genji and the Echo in the mist, really just trying to burst some of these targets down. Feel they're taken down eventually. He was such a problem at the start of this fight, and things are going from bad to worse already for Atlanta. Donghak is healthy on the point. Worth pointing out that Geo is here on the Mercy. Stand up is going to have to use a Meteor Strike to get out, but meanwhile, Stork is brought back into the fray. Another short punch on Hardy now. The pressure is on. Immortality Field deployed here with a Spitfire, and he control this whole time. Landon foul, lips somehow. And although Donghak's able to find this elimination here, it's still the Spitfire ticking it up. And look at how annoying backbone is being just May walls and ice blocks in the corner there. They end up getting the point right off the rip. And you still can't get backbone out of this corner. I mean, off of this first fight, one in which like they're gonna just trading back and forth. The Spitfire are almost gonna get 50% off of this. That's that's awesome. I mean, look at this. They, they are end up with double support ult here. You have your Blizzard. I mean, they had to invest just nothing really outside of the survivability. And you know, there was a really good immortality field there from Landon. They kept Hadi and Backbone alive for a period of time. Allowed Backbone to cycle through the ice block and the wall and the point. Oh! Okay, take the back door. Apparently, Blizzard also thrown down to cover the Spitfire. Zoning advance. Blizzard. Zoning Blizzard. Nobody from Atlanta dares step inside of that here. Fielder desperately trying to keep Lip up from the high ground, but it's not going to be enough here. Immortality field down. It's going to be a Nano Doomfist going in. Landon is the target, and they get him. But a sound barrier comes a little bit too late to save the Baptiste. Donghak takes a moment here, but Geo's been taken out. This is getting dangerous. The pin is perfect. Hardy was lying in wait. Donghak now scrambling away with Orion is in hot pursuit and Donghak's in trouble. And being able to get these first picks there for London are massive, right? Being able to get to the point, get that first pick, Donghak gets quite low. And there's Unreal! That, and there's that slow from like the Symmetra turrets. Like it's not like one of the you know, key features of it, right? It's the damage, you know, stacking them up. But that slow allows Hadi to get some extra damage as he's trying to get away. And, you get that kill on the Donghead. You're, you're at a point where this might be last fight. Stork is close to duplication here, but his Spitfire holding on to some big ultimates. That Biotic Grenade could not be followed up upon, but it's going to be a blade coming out from Lip. Can he make the difference? There's no Nano to mix with this. Lip can only peer in from the extremities. Can't get too close. Trying to backstab a bit of damage on Lana, but the Immortality Field is in play now. Lip knocked away for the time being. It's Donghack taken down by the May, and this is trouble for the rain. They bring the Doomfist back in for another bite of the apple, and Donghak is hungry. It's Landon falling first now. Soundberry comes out again, belatedly not enough to save the Baptiste once more. And Donghak deals with Sparker. Now the Sin Slow. Let's look at the shoot. Field from the high ground over the Blizzard. Could be good, and Lips already been taken down. Donghak set off the map. It's point of his buddy. And the London Spitfire open up with a big round win. Yeah, by the crowd, you'd think we were in London. <laughs> you gotta be a Spitfire chant going on here. I mean, this is about as bad as you can get here for the rain off the start. I mean, they did not good, look good. We had a little bit of a pause here. Kevin, is that a hottie? Hottie is mid sign damage? That's tough. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> hey, that's Photoshop right there. That is Photoshop. That is to scale. Hey, do we have people confiscating the signs? What's going oh, on? I don't with think it? so, yeah. I think this one gets to stay. I might veto that one, Matthew. Come on, man. Hardy calls for a pause there. Said, yo, you better, you better give the rain some, some time to catch their breath here. <laughs> yeah, Hardy was like you with the chair, and uh, Dung Hack was like me in the corner. <laughs> so that round starts off with a really long fight in which the Spitfire gained like 40 to 50% of that capture progress. Yeah. And we saw how difficult it is for Dong Hack to put real pressure on Hardy. There's a lot of displacement. There's a decent amount of crowd control. But in terms of getting rid of I the mean, Ryan, it seemed like it took so long. But, but it almost feels like he even got baited there at the start, right? Because it wasn't really about Hadi. I mean, Landon was able to live forever you know, with the you know, immortality field right on Baptiste. And then also Backbone 
was able to just, you know, ice block, Maywall, ice block, Maywall. Just nobody was like doing anything to him in the corner. And he's also like, I don't know if you caught it, but he's playing in the corner if you're on Lighthouse, like, you know, when you enter towards like one of the sides. Uh, and he's got the Symmetra turrets above him as well. So if anybody gets close to him, you got a little bit of the car wash going, and then he just puts a, a Maywall up and nobody can do any damage to him. We I mean, saw Donghak push that corner once, knocking both players up, but eventually had to pull back because the turrets. Well, the second time we saw it, he ended up dying a hottie, right? So, I mean, uh, not, not a great start. I will say uh, that's probably the best Reinhardt point you have here on Ilios. So, uh, you no, know, if that is the worst case scenario for the rain, you think now as we move into uh, some of the other points here, we take a look at a replay here. This is going to be a uh, hottie with this charge. Well, no cancel, because he knows no. Donghak can get back onto the platform. And hottie's not a coward. <laughs> He's willing to go for the ride. He knew there was no choice. Cancels that charge. It's a seismic slam that puts Donghak back in play and invalidates that attempt. A, a ball. Ruins is next, everybody. Out the gates we go. I mean, this is like full circle here. I mean, we got a wrecking ball composition here for the rain. So, like, wrecking ball, this means you basically have no front line, but it doesn't really matter because they're going to play the Ash at a distance with yeah. the Mercy Pocket and then kind of like. Tracer and the Karika can play on their own, but... You do in the sense that you can create this spacing here from Donghak. He's just being like an interstitial element, giving Lip a bit of room here. Because of this high ground as well, it's really difficult for the Spitfire to access this, right? Like, they have no... Well, I mean, you can have, like, Admiral kind of, like, go and make a play for it, right? But uh, you're really relying on those, like, Sim TPs to get some of these characters who don't have, you know, verticality, you know, built into their kits up on that high ground. We're going to pocket it to Ash in play. That is extremely threatening to Backbone and Sparker. Well, they have to play around this Rhine shield, but Donghak's going to make that hard. Where is Hardy coming from? Heads to the mid pillar, stops himself. Glancing blow of the fire strike as it went in Fielder's direction, but Landon's fallen. Stalker's able to find purchase in the back line, and Chio brings Lip back into the fray. Can he get far enough from the action to be effective? It looks like the coach gun sends him to safety. But how do you get the May off of the point? Like, I think this is actually pretty good here for the rain. Like, I think this comp makes a Cheer lot of the sense. Yeah, I <laughs> think they're just uh, not able to keep it going for long. So Atlanta will get control of the point here. And typically, you would say, like, do you expect to see some changes from London? I, I don't know. I mean, uh, you can probably swap the May out uh, you know, for something else, but it seems unlikely they're going to deviate from this. They're going to try and figure out a way to maybe access to where Lip is playing from. This is a very curated composition from the Atlanta Reign. We've seen Donghak's legendary ball on occasion this season already. Lip under pressure, Bob to step in. Contest the point, make it hard to step up here. Lip needs to be careful. Backbone playing awfully close to that. Choki has a blizzard available, so wants to be in position to really cut off any reinforcements. And Immortality Field already has to be used here, and an Ant Matrix almost cost Stalker his life there. Backbone not able to connect with that ice school. It's going to be a sound barrier now. Kitsune rushed here from Fielder. We'll see the rain drop to the point for the time being as Chio tries to get a read on things. The Spitfire are no closer to assault in this point than they were earlier as the rain sidestepped them. No, it's just, you know, both teams just kind of trading ultimates and just staying alive now. This is going to be the Spitfire's opportunity to push in. Lips has to get on the high ground here. The Maywall stymieing him for a moment. It's going to be a catch on the backbone with the Dynamite. A blizzard thrown out here. The Spitfire, not too perturbed for the time being. A Stalker misses that pulse bomb. There wasn't an ice block up for backbone there. Stalker under pressure. Chio steps in, tries to heal up the Tracer. They're going to be able to get him away. But the Spitfire flipped the point. It, can they hold it though? So you're gonna have soccer oh! ball. I mean, that is. Do you want fries with that? So I, I think the hardest part will be getting the hold, right? Because Atlanta can play so split, can try and isolate players, and there's nobody really to collapse on. Like you think the Ash is the most likely target, but from these areas that the Ash is playing, you have to commit a lot, right? You have to TP multiple players in, up on a high ground, difficult to get them out. Curious how London approached this. Hilda looks to clear the turrets here as Donghak is causing problems elsewhere. Lip boosted in damage, finds Backbone now, and Hardy wants to search forward here. Lip able to play away from that Earth Shadow, and here comes Bob inside a small room. A scary prospect. The immortality field of Landon is down, and so the Spitfire have to huddle. The Rain are not attempting to capture right now, so this gives some time for the Spitfire. What a dynamite connection, though. Admiral burnt to a crisp, and back to the low ground go the Spitfire. Donghak now wants to make this even worse, and it's a minefield in the small room. You're not getting out of this one with limbs intact. It's Hardy. Surges forward, though. Lip is down. Chio under pressure, but Hardy eventually is brought to heal. And I think you needed this Genji switch like two fights ago. 
I think if you're London. I think it may just be a little bit too late here on this point. The Genji gives you the verticality, you know, to be able to actually go and put pressure on that Ash without committing the whole team. Backbone Woe is in trouble. It's going to have to be a sound barrier preemptively now. Stalker playing from the periphery with a pulse bomb to deliver. Not a stick, but it's on the pillar and Admiral stumbles into it. Now Stalker can continue to go to work here. Sparker clinging to life. The immortality field prolongs it, but not for long enough. Backbone still in the mix on the Genji here, but nowhere near that blade. And Stalker slaps him senseless. Now it's Hardy, full surround here for the Atlanta Rain to push the Ryan Hart off. Overtime ticks down and he cannot touch. It's an even game on Ilios. As we knew, that Lighthouse would be probably the best case scenario there for London Spitfire in terms of drawing that point early. Ruins heavily favors the Atlanta Rain and what they want to play. I, I actually think if you're the Spitfire, you probably come out and play this Genji here. I think that the May on well, uh, you know, you can take a lot of the high ground, you can play an Echo here, right? I think the Genji gives you a little bit more kill potential, especially on a back line that may include, uh, you know, on a brick. Soldier 76 here from Lip. Starting to see him emerge more, especially with his potency on those Flashpoint maps, but even here, being a constant thorn, Lip likely will switch to him and use them very weathered legs to get back into the fray quickly. No, the Lip Tracer here! Yeah, and you're playing the Winston, right? So you're going to play it on in the mix. You have a few good nano boost targets here for the rain. And actually, Backbone plays the May, so they're going to commit to the May here. A lot like the last round, though, there's not... I mean, who are you collapsing on? Really, it's about probably trying to catch Fielder out. Backbone will not give that high ground up. Shio doesn't have any healing presently from Fielder until he backs up. Backbone... Immovable from this high ground position. <laughs> I like that. Sticky bombs on backbone. He's forced to ice block and drop. That's the that's that's the wall and ice block out already though. Stalking out, looking for backbone once more. He knows those defensive cooldowns aren't available, but Landon clips Stalker's wings. Lip a threat, but now without Echo in the mix here, Hardy can get more aggressive. There's no focusing beam to punish him, and he found Fielder. Beelines towards Adana's position. And, and interesting enough. You're gonna have them play Genji now, so we're gonna see a Genji Tracer dive here <laughs> against, <year> the, is it? <laughs> against the May uh, the May Reinhardt Rush comp, which I feel like London's had good success against teams who have done this to them or tried to do this to them. Really, you know, uh, if Boston able to you know do nice things, but they have like Bash in the mix and other right. So I mean, this is tough. Landon, can he pressure out the immortality field? That's the objective there for Lip. Pulse bomb available. Would like to hold that for after that cooldown's used. Sim TP lip ops to clear it now. Dong hack charged here. Nano Doers could be a scary prospect. Hardy quickly pulls the plug, but backbone is left in the wake of his teammates. Stalker will pounce. Here's Atlanta beginning the cap now, but it's unlikely the Spitfire will give it up so easily. An amplification matrix in play with the rain and playing around it. They're far too mobile to be subject to that. Pulse dropped in. Hardy takes a bit of damage, but had that sound barrier ticking as Admiral lets it go. Primal for Donghak, hoping for environmentals, but nobody serving themselves up on the Spitfire side. He'll settle for the disruption, but eventually he's brought down. It's a trade of tanks. Stalker with the deflect. Now the wall comes up, but he's on the right side of it. But the longer this fight drags out, it's better for the Spitfire, right? And now you lose a large source of healing. This is a blizzard. Geo can't back away. Frozen solid. And Sparker finishes the job. Donghak returns here on the Doom Fist, but the rain still haven't had their time in the sun. It's no cap. For Atlanta, and Donghak makes a swift exit too. I mean, we didn't love the uh, the Doom look on Lighthouse. If we were going to get her here, maybe for the map. S London, you're okay if these fights go longer, right? With this, the Reigns comp, they want to just get in there, blow up targets, finish these fights quick. You start to ramp that Sim damage over time. You know, you get the immortality field out. And that's fine for the Spitfire. They're totally fine playing in this back corner around these turrets. Expect this one to be a long fight as well. Stalker has that blade, wants to get it out before the sound barrier is used, but will have to contend again with the lamp. Pulse bomb, not enough to put the pressure on the Spitfire. Here comes the end matrix and Stalker, it's his time to go! Sim Tyrant's cutting him, it's gonna be a sound barrier. Admiral got it in time! Shuts down that offensive ultimate! Hardy trying to be immovable here and <laughs> sends Geo packing! The Spitfire starts with a win! Oh, that is a big yikes if you're an Atlanta Rain fan. I mean, that is not what you want to see here to kick things off. As uh, clearly the Doom was just not super effective against those Reinhardt-based compositions that they were bringing in. 
and Stalker has that blade, you know, uh, waiting for the right time, maybe trying to go in. Doghag is dead basically instantly. And then when he pops that blade, they have Sound Barrier back already. They have an Ant Matrix going as well. It's, uh, man, it's a rough look from the rain. So uh, I'm interested because going into map number two, it obviously their, their map selection, the Spitfire are not going to move off of these cups. It's going to be, you know, uh, Sim, May, Sim, Genji, Reinhardt, Lucio, Baptiste. And they're going to say beat it. We saw them do it with the ball, but every other look did not fare out well. Uh, maybe you start to go towards some maps where you can play like Arisa-based compositions, uh, and that's kind of how you think you get through it, but uh, this series may be a bit rougher than we thought. The blueprint is supposed to be there to handle this Reinhardt-based composition, but the Spitfire do it like nobody else. The Atlanta Rain select Blizzard World for our hybrid map of this series. And just as you hinted, perhaps an opportunity to lead into some of their strengths. I mean, uh, you have Hawk, obviously, on the roster as well. Like, do you maybe see him come in? Dong Hack standing up. A little bit different. Yeah, I mean, do you try and play? Like, you know, if you're going to do Blizzard World, do you say, yeah, like, uh, you can play D.Va, you can play Sigma. Oh. Maybe that's maybe that's a little bit of the angle we're going to get here. Can you handle the Hawk? That's the question for the London Spitfire heading into this next map. It'll be Blizzard World coming up in our first elimination match of the tournament. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back live from the Matami Athletic Center.
immovable, unshakable, implacable. Your London Spitfire refuse to be moved. Metagame after metagame we've seen come over the last few months and they have stayed the course. Reinhardt, Sim, May as their core and they have carved out win after win and they're looking for the biggest one of the year right here. I love it. <laughs> Darryl, you know what? We're not that great at all this other stuff. <laughs> Let's just play Reinhardt. So, uh, and, and we do have a sub coming in. So we were talking a little bit about it, you know, before uh, we went to the break, but they actually are going to bring Hawk in here for Blizzard World. Uh, Hawk, I feel like it's like, oh, hey, uh, we're, we're down, you know, in elimination. Oh, yeah, let's just bring in Hawk off the bench. I mean, it's like such one of the hardest things to do. The operation uh, get Hawk here, Dub, volume yeah, five. He, he always plays well. Uh, it's just, I uh, know, they. I feel like they put him in in some rough spots. He I, would only get something in for push maps historically. Yeah. That's that map three. So, so this tells you it's like either like D.Va, Sigma. Do you, do you somehow believe that like, Zarya is better than the Reinhardt comps, right? Because if you if you believe that, right, then There's you no also way. then you also believe you can continue to play like the Genji, right? And you, you know you play around like maybe it's like Bastion uh, with those types of things. But I, I think that's a little bit of a risky game to play, especially when you're down one up. Much of the discussion has been about how the Orisa Genji comps might feature and have a a chance of dismantling this Spitfire setup here. In fact, we came into this weekend feeling like. As strong as the Reinhardt composition was, it was well, just as fallible. Yeah, I mean, you saw uh, Donghag play almost like every every main tank in map number one, right? So, kind of saw what all those are going to look like. <laughs> See what uh, Hawk is able to do here, where... Uh, no, Hawk, uh, you think about even like last year, his dude was really solid. Uh, you no, know, uh, obviously he's a big, uh, you know, wants, wants to slow back on Doom, not going to happen. Uh, but uh, he, he was really good at the Doom Fist, so maybe they actually see that as the way forward, and maybe they think that he's a little bit better at it than Donghang. Atlanta really making DPS selections to try and punish the more short-ranged May, and of course that's Symmetra. I just don't think they care. Like, they have so much experience going against comps that do this to them. London, I just don't think they care at all. Like, Landed also uh, is sneaky, a, sneakily a huge threat to an Echo, especially yeah. unpocketed. Uh, I also think that, like, Hawk as well, Backbone. you know, maybe... Uh, see this? We've seen the... Yeah. Little platform. Yep. And now we can run the stat that Life Weaver was played in the playoffs. Yep. Thank uh, you very much. <laughs> yep. That gets a round of applause from the the, 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 the Weaver mains out there. Back to business. So far, business has been pretty darn good. Uh, I think also that Hawk coming in gives you like more flexibility, right? Like if you were gonna, you know, have Dung oh. hack in, where they go? It's gonna go straight up top. Yeah. So. They're gonna try and dislodge from this high ground. I think probably like either wrap around the back. Yeah, they're gonna go like loop all the way around here, come come towards this choke. Can they storm that high ground position that Fielder and Chio are occupying? Well, with a teleporter, you can, get, you can get there. They have to be ready for this. It's about time to go. Fielder setting himself up as to not be in line of sight here, but it looks like the Spitfire are just going to walk it for now. You can see the pressure on the Atlanta Rain. They look a little bit unsure about where to position themselves now. The Spitfire are probing. Backbone has the high ground for free. Nice ice wall to peel Hawk off of him. Give him some time to heal back up. Meanwhile, Lip taking it off angle pretty wide. Stalker also overlooking the action on this Echo. It's just where do you find the first pick here for the Spitfire? Backbone. It's got to be Hawk. Backbone's seen better days here. A lot of damage taken by the Spitfire. A little tickle on the point, but not much to write home about. Here's Landon looking upwards towards the Echo. Air Matrix in play, and Hawk could be in trouble quickly. He jumps away. You can already tell already, Hawk just doing a tremendous job playing his life, right? A lot of times yeah. we've seen Donghat getting punished. Hawk able to get in and out pretty easily right now. Nano boost available here. It's going to be Hawk going in with the Nano. Takes a bit of damage, a mutual knockdown, and Hardy is removed. Field of finds the damage from the periphery. Hawk looks to advance further, but his health pool isn't looking great. So he'll take the kill on Hardy and then look to pressure later. He has a Meteor Strike. Does he want this TP? No, back to safety. Back to the high ground, maybe another Dangerous. seismic slam. Yeah, he still wants to go on in. And these players are in a pretty bad spot. Immortality field forced. It's been taken down the blizzard now, maybe just to catch the one player. It's Chia caught inside of it. Backbone brings him down. The later rain push off the point defensively and get caught. The sound barrier as well here for the Spitfire. As they want to keep going. This is bad. The rain are so split and like they're they're getting damaged, but not really finishing players off. And they come right back in and take the point. 
Bro, what? They is get the, the first kill on Hardy. A pretty comfortable elimination on the Ryan, and then they start scrambling for, for more. Backbone getting a free kill on Chia with the Blizzard clearly feels like it was worth it. But the longer these fights get drawn out, the messier they become, right? And players get split, the sim starts to ramp. There's a TP Blizzard in the mix, right? You don't expect it to come. And then and then all of a sudden now here comes Hottie just charging in off the back. And, and you take that first point with a good amount of time. Stalker here's been quiet. Held onto that duplicate from the previous engagement. Even against May Sim. Can't get too risky here. Trying to occupy land as much as possible. Hardy takes some stickies on the way through, but Hawk is also struggling. Okay, Stalker committing now. The May walk through enough. Hardy under pressure. He can't get away. Hawk will finish the job with a punch. TP is up there, but Hawk's gonna step ahead of it now. And the Spitfire will finally be brought to heal. Yeah, the immortality field was actually like thrown around the corner, and Hardy actually had no chance to make it towards it. I think maybe he thought that the immortality field was going to be thrown like right under him, and he was going to be able to play around some of those pillars inside of it. But it was thrown back by Admiral and Landon, and he had no chance to make it back to it. And he was he was Stalker threw up a wall straight away. It was actually yeah. colored blue, but it was his because he duplicated that mate, and Hardy had nowhere to go at that point. Hey, TP throwing up, no good. Hardy going to go the old-fashioned route. One way to get space, charge directly at them and have everybody split. No one on the Atlanta rank can really stand to fight him. That sim wall buys a Spitfire this positioning, but what can they do with it? It's time to capitalize. Hawk's in trouble, doesn't want to get stunned because he won't be able to get out with that ultimate. To the high ground here. He'll need to be attended to pretty quickly because there's a fight brewing. Well, you don't want to fight in there if you're Atlanta, right? Uh, I was going to say, Stalker's closer to the ground, easier to take out. I mean, the Doom benefits being inside of there, but nobody really else. Backbone's done. Hardy eventually will be brought down. This is a completely different strategy from what we saw from the Atlanta raid on Ilios, right? Yeah. It's not full commit. Hawk is never going all in. And when he does, he has a meteor strike to get him out. Yeah, I'll take a look at this from Hawk's POV. Is... Oh, 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 nice. Just seems he's playing a little bit more patient, just like playing around maybe a little bit more defensively, trying to live where you know, Dong Hack was really all in on a lot of those early on. In his defense on a map like this, you have better sort of defensive neutral high ground to retreat to. When an Ilios, if you're on the point, you're probably staying. Shout out here for Hardy. And London is okay with these fights in these close rooms, right? Uh, it's just, can Atlanta not get baited into going full oh! in on it? Uh, he had a rally as well. Geo, for the second time in a row, dying with rally up. First time it was in a blizzard, so can't blame that, him for that. But he just wanted to see the fire strike coming. But is he going to be thrown down on the point? Ow, you're going to touch this! Hawk! It's a doomsicle! Stalker going to dupe the May. Ice block now. Geo finally gets a chance to use that rally. Shadow comes in, but the shield was there! Now Hardy's going to charge it, and he found Fielder! Still, Fielder going to violate himself and sleep the ride. He's actually going to win out here. Hawk comes to his rescue, and the Atlanta Reign are back in it. Hey, hey that rally's quite strong, right? It's, uh, you know, Fielder able to stay alive through all of that. It looks like they were going to get the cart over the line, but Stalker comes out really <laughs> nice dupe, and then you get all the reinforcements out of spawn. Great cooldowns from Fielder there. Yeah. Could have been very dangerous going down to the Rhine in that situation, but he had bio, he had sleep, and he had backup. 16 seconds left on this attacking push for London. Fielder set up in a safe spot. Oh, is it safe anymore? Backbone's coming his way. Fielder looking to try and hop, skip and jump away, but the mate could be a problem. He hits the sleep. But elsewhere, it's Lippin Hawk already having fallen now. The London Spitfire breakthrough. Hardy the only casualty for them here, Stalker. The wall, it's in his way. And Sparker outfoxes him. It, even even with Fielder, you know, getting that nano off and like I think Backbone ends up dying there, that's still so much value to just get him out of the fight, right? To push him all the way back basically into spawn. Nobody else needs to be committed to it. Backbone just goes in, puts some damage down, forces him out. I mean, that takes Fielder basically completely out of that fight. That really encapsulates Hawk's play style on this map so far. In for a bit, then getting back out. Has that Meteor Strike available. Oh, see what I mean? Even if you're playing with May and Sim, Landon is such a laser. And Matrix Hawk gets out with his life, but only just. This is going to buy you some more free push. 
Yeah, the, 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 you're starting to lose some time. Oh, dude, this, you're getting these support picks early on. I mean, that is bad stuff. I'd like to know what happened there. You're not going to get that one back. Is the immortality field now thrown down for the Spitfire? Cleared by Stalker. Teleport now to that side hallway, but the uh, rain weren't waiting for them. It yeah, dodged the meteor strike there with a, a TP, but that was two fights in a row. 23. Uh, you're able to get the supports out early. The Atlanta range just with the duplicate to work with here. Hottie's not really been able to land some of these big shatters, but with Sound Barrier here, uh, maybe going to get a qu quite bit aggressive. Another main dupe, but Stalker is going to get caught in a blizzard instantly. Into Ice Block. Beat. Hardy, Shatter available now, Stalker gonna be knocked out of Duke looking for Hawk, he has to get away. There's nothing here except Attack Fighter for Lip coming up, trying to get into a flanking position. Stalker's down, Hardy Shatter! Yes! <laughs> Massive! <laughs> Enough coming back from that one! Lip trying to peer in off the point, but the rain are really. To just get a map completion is huge, especially uh, after, you know, the second point, right? They're down to, like, you know, really going in that last part of the map, 45 seconds. And Atlanta gets, like, one fight, right? You lose Fielder, you back up, they use Beat, they use that Reinhardt charge to just, like, you know, scare them a little bit, push them back. Uh, and you get one right around the corner, and it's just a shatter, man. I believe they get Chio right off the rip there as well, so you get another support kill. I mean, uh, really nice stuff from the Spitfire where they have to feel pretty comfortable. I don't think this defense is going to be as easy uh, as the offensive side here. Let's take a look here. Just a right this click. Is just a random amped right click. You've got to be kidding! <laughs> cool guys, don't look at uh, support eliminations, I guess. I mean... Where has Lip been so far this series? I mean... Nowhere, really. I mean, uh, no. Had some moments in map number one. This uh, round, though, I mean, you know, not really able to put down, like, I mean, you're doing damage on the 76, but it's not turning into final blows, not turning into kills. I mean, uh, it's just damage that ultimately ends up getting healed up by Landon, right? I mean, Landon, uh, you, know, you look at some of the support stats right now. I mean, healing done across the board. You got, like, 7K for Fielder, uh, 6K for Chio, uh, 6K for Admiral, and then Landon, uh, the standout, you know, 12K, right? <laughs> Keeping that hardy alive. But what what is lip, what is lip play? Like what what do you do, right? Oh! Will this be the answer? Sombra Echo. Well, you haven't found the answer that far this far, so you may as well try it. The legendary lip Sombra now comes out after a lackluster Soldier 76. I just showing. don't I just don't know if they're gonna care about like the hacks. Like, I can totally see the Spitfire, like, getting hacked like that. Sure, turn around and then just back play the front line. He's so low. Oh, he dances! Hardy shield perfectly! Lip got spotted again by the turrets placed behind the Spitfire. They were ready for a flank! Hardy's low, but Landon, he's on the scene. Bio there, pulls up a little bit short. Fielder using it defensively. Hawk trying to get away from that Ryan knockdown. He was slept. Yeah, Matrix. Oh, jumps right into it there, and Stalker goes down. Landon gets him again. Lip with a hack from the back line, but there's not much more than that. Sparker able to find Fielder, and the rain are running on fumes. I mean, are you just going to play around EMP? Is that the is that the play here? I mean, I just don't think you're going to have enough damage to blow through some of these characters. If your strategy against the London Spitfire team you beat time and time again is to play around EMP, you might want to pack up and head home. Well, especially because they got a full map completion, right? So you just play the clock and, you know, you play the, the, the length of the, the map and you feel like there's enough fights and enough drawn out fights that you can get it to a scenario where you get one fight at the end and you're good. Backbone going low, but Hawk doesn't have the ability to finish the job. Stalker, though, does. Spark it laying prone while sleeping. And this medial strike could be devastating. Admiral takes the hit. Hawk looking for Landon still. Where is the Baptiste? Landon able to juke him there with the exo boots and head back up to the high ground, but Hardy is down now. The ladder rain have finally broken through. Nah, this will be Stalker with just a, a victory blizzard there towards the end. Is... And they're not just playing around the EMP crucially, no. right? I mean, it's a nice biotic grenade, I believe, from Builder that sets up that first kill. So uh, now you have EMP here as the, the Spitfire. You probably know that. I think you probably want to take a fight fast, get that over with, and then be set up 
to get a string of holds. Oh, that's dangerous. Hardy was waiting for him. Mutual knockdown between the tanks, but definitely favored London there. Shatter in hand. Geo will not hang around to see. But this is good though for goes. London. Play the choke, right? Force this EMP out here at the choke. Don't allow them to get some payload progress with enough progress to end up Are taking the second point. You got the EMP here? Pack. Okay, teleport out. Stalker though removed by backbone. Somehow this echo is not getting the value when Hawk was in power point, but he's knocked to the ground. And Landon's there with the damage as always. Geo forced back here. Charge doesn't quite connect, but Hardy will walk the extra meter. So that's the nano for the rain. So you traded your nano for shatter. That's probably something you're okay with if you're the Spitfire. And you have this rally here, you know, rally plus your EMP, right? You don't want to probably layer those. Those are like your two big fight winners. It looks like Landon's trying to break LOS to potentially that EMP comes through. There it is. It's on four. Perfect good, timing. Yeah. Came after that immortality field as well. So no chance for the Spitfire to recover there. Sound barrier never got used. But if you're going to lose the fight, if you're the Spitfire, just chucking your amp matrix out there and then having them use Rally and EMP when you know they just used Nano the previous fight, it doesn't feel that bad. I, I think now you're in a spot where Atlanta, how do you win another fight? They're going to have to beat on the other side. Spitfire eating the sticky bombs as they head to the high ground. It's Stalker with a duplication available. Hawk also can play that extra bit more aggressive with a Meteor Strike in the back pocket. Upstairs it goes, Sparky with a body grenade as well. He has to throw the wall up here. The Atlanta Rain are going to try and back away, but the Sound Barrier is going to propel the Spitfire forward. They're out for blood. The Rain don't have enough left to give. Here's Hawk again. He gets some ultimates out here, and the Rain are so close. Oh, that is... Meteor Strike! Yeah, he's going to be here. He's going to get out. He's a blizzard on the point though, it had to be ice block used by Stalker in that duplicated make form. Hawks back to safety, but can he get healed quickly enough? Slowly but surely, there'll be a nano boost available here for Field Arrest. The Atlanta Raider verging on this next checkpoint. Hawks look at the TP, wants to get it out of the way. The Spitfire gets split, they can't get through the teleporter. Stalker's been taken down again, but Admiral's out of the mix here. And one by one, these team trade players. Hawk to safety, back at point, knocking Hardy away from the car, but now we'll be under pressure. It's filled with a body grenade in one second. It's gonna be a big one. Spark is an issue. Hawk, he doesn't get bio here. Hardy charging in. Field having to back away. The sleep is good, and the fire strike will go missing. But Field eventually gets chased down. And that cart is still waiting to touch the goal. The main issue is, is we take a lock uh, from the top down map. Landon is actually playing this archway around the corner the entire time. Hawk is never able to get around there and take Landon out. So you're able to keep Hottie alive, Sparker alive on that payload the entire time. One minute remaining for the Atlanta Reign. Failure to get this checkpoint would send the Spitfire to a, I can't believe I'm saying it, match point. Landon drops down here. Very canny with those exo boots. Now we can reposition in a pinch. Packed though from the backside. It's Slip looking at pressure. Build up another EMP for what may be the last real fight here. Still harassing. Now at 90. Amp Matrix up and landed. It could be an insta kill if he's able to get something through this. Hardy's not in position to fire strike through, but now he backs up. Sends one in. The rain waited out. No! Hardy's able to find Stalker! It's a disaster! No echo to work with now, and the Raid are going to face some music with four. Stalker will switch over to the Genji. There's an EMP available at least. An EMP for who? You see Sparker just trying to check, and he found them. Five seconds left. There's got to be a touch, and then a cobbled together fight attempt Shatter. to follow. Oh. That sleep is good. Hardy was on the flank, and now they've spotted that out. But they've got to act quick. The Shatter could come from the rear and be devastating. The EMP only gets two. Can they follow up on it? Sparker's done down. There's the Shatter! Stalker is out of the game, but Hawk's able to find back poke here with the Meteor Strike and Field of Trades. It's Hardy down. Sound barrier now for three for the London Spitfire. They've got to hold on. They've got Landon and Admiral both, but the ladder is removed. Field of finds the body grenade connection now, and Chio wants to push up. Here's the TP. It gets taken down. The Spitfire have to walk back to the car, and they can't get there. The rain lives still. I mean, bro, they are so fortunate they have Fielder back there, man. I mean, the, the sleeps on the hottie, the biotic grenades, being able to get that nano off at the end. I mean, they are, if he does not make that whole sequence of plays, they are staring down their tournament lives in this next map coming up. 
Stalker dying to that fire strike. I thought that was it. He's on the Genji now. Maybe less than ideal. They're on the Arisa base composition here. Main wall thrown up. And they're going to bring the Bastion into the mix. So the Bastion is able to do just tons of frontline damage. But the Spitfire at this point of the map give up the TP. They don't need that mobility. 50 seconds on the clock. They're playing for two, three fights here. You can bring that Bastion in. Yeah, back in Bastion land now. We know the Spitfire are comfortable here. Hawk is riddled with bullets. And the Arisa is already down. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, this is super smart here from London. Where the time left in the map and where you are, there is no need for that mobility. You're not doing TP tricks all over the place, right? So bring in the damage and just punish that front line. You need to win two fights pretty much here. The Rain are going to have to rattle off like two, three fights in a row here to get this. And you can just play this end game for the Spitfire with these ultimates, but Sparker with this artillery. I mean, you can just zone off the payload. Icebox forced early here on Backbone. That could be critical. He does not have Blizzard up here. Artillery. Water strike from Sparker. Backbone is down to the bouncing grenade here. He was able to get rid of the immortality field, but Stalker cuts through London's as well. It's a whole team effort from Atlanta. They're in overtime now. They must finish the map. So if you're the rain, you're going to have that beep coming up here. Surely Backbone on the Widow. Just they, for a moment. I think probably just to see if you can get a pick, right? Uh, see if like somebody pushes up a little bit too far. Like you get a headshot. Yeah. Are we about to see like a, a hottie like try to game end or shatter here? Is that kind of what we're playing towards? Here comes the mortar strike now. Carpeting the points. Hawk very low here. You can see just how charged up backbone is behind the card. It's inch by inch. The Hawk is trying to advance here. Oh, oh no! They got him! And the sound barrier was too late! Hardy, TP's now back to safety. Charge to the point. Hard to keep track of his right hard right now. And Spark of Pummel's lip. Bro. Stalker is down! And map by map! There's a legacy in the remaking! The London Spitfire take this! I mean, you are so boomed at this point if you're the right. I mean, the sound barrier just a second late, not able to save Hawk. Some nice comp switches there towards the end there for the Spitfire. And what, I mean, uh, yesterday it was like a reverse sweep, right? So, yes. I mean, what, you've lost now five straight maps for the Atlanta Reign. How many maps did this team lose all year? I mean, like, uh, not many. I mean, this is, uh, and hey, Time starts to move real slow up on that stage, especially right now, knowing that you have to reverse sweep just to give yourself a chance to play tomorrow. Some moments here from Blizzard World. It was Hawk starting on this Doomfist. Again, we, we kind of praised him, right? Being pretty safe, being careful taking these fights. I mean, things like this, amped fire strike kills on Stalker. London Spitfire feels like the planets are lying for them in quite a few moments here. But hey, you know what they say, you make your own luck. Hey, you know what's so interesting? Uh, Atlanta, you're, you're doing Doomfist, you're Arisa, uh, you have all these different DPS in the mix. London will play Rhyme, Baptiste, and the Lucio. Everything else is fair game, right? Uh, they will throw other things in the mix. It's a Sim, it's a Bastion. Uh, I mean, dude, this, especially going to Flashpoint, I mean, this is so dicey for the rain. The most dominant franchise of the year are teetering on the edge of utter destruction. Surabasa will be the map choice for our third, and hopefully not final if you're a rain fan, stay. Stick around. The London Spitfire are not playing around.
most hyped team of the preseason. The most dominant team <laughs> at midseason. And now the Atlanta Reign are threatening to be the fastest team to exit at 2023 playoffs. It's time to face the music. This team's lost 12 maps in the year. They've lost five straight in the span of 24 hours. I mean, not many, you know, people, teams are equipped for that type of fall. Uh, and now you are forced to battle all the way back. Uh, I actually think um, London has played obviously tremendous today. I think the rain for the most part have played quite well. Uh, they are a different team when Sombra is not king and, you know, th that's where they're so good throughout the year. I mean, Lip is unquestionably the best at that hero. They play the best around that hero. They have a tremendous support line. A lot of those things still reign true. You don't have the Sombra in the mix though. And I think you see where they kind of struggle after that. With Sombra so ubiquitous in the meta, we forgot that Lip is truly a specialist. A couple of heroes when he is truly incredible. We've seen him play, uh, look, Soldier 76. Ash. Ash looked very good, I might say, yes. on Ruins. But he had the space. The Wrecking Ball really opened the way past the pocketing from Chio. In a situation where he doesn't have that level of resource invested in him. Well, and also when they play Sombra comps and when Lip plays Sombra, he is getting EMP so fast compared to other players in the league that you are playing around that ultimate way more than everybody else. Uh, you, you don't have that here. Uh, so let's see what they decide to do. So 76, we've seen like, uh, you know, Hydron and the Defiant do really nice things here with 76 on this map in particular, taking these off angles. London don't necessarily have an answer to that flanking ability but outside London, of Admiral and a DPS. Every map we could say London doesn't have an answer for this and they just keep playing this and it, it ends up working But they're out. the one asking the questions. Yeah. And the question is, do you want to play any more Overwatch Atlanta this weekend? This first point is so huge. I mean, if you lose this first point, if you're the Atlanta, like Rain, where is your mental headspace at? Backbone shot off the flanking angle just now for Lip. And there's a teleporter spark. It looks to try and take the fight. Lip's under pressure. He's already down. Five versus four, no flanker up. How do you get out of this? And, and I don't think they really care to push it. Uh, you know, if you're the, the Spitfire, sit back and eventually you believe you're going to take out Hawk or you're going to get a TP follow-up. Look Phil's at this. In He's in trouble. She goes to the rescue with a swift step and a Susie, but Phil is still caught there. Oh my! They trade at the very least. You can't complain about that, but there's a point that's got to be capped here. Stall for Backbone. Eventually, he's taken down. Oh man, the supports for Atlanta are unreal. I mean, if, if, if this team has, you know, League average supports. We're probably watching the Outlaws play at this point. This series is probably done. I mean, Fielder and Chio there, just the ability for Chio to get that TP, you know, the Suzu be able to keep Fielder alive, pick up kill to be that. Allowing area. Fielder to trade there yeah. is unbelievable and huge for the Atlanta Reigns' chances of recapping. But now, which angle, which access do the Spitfire take this fight on? It's a fake TP, they might look to try and wrap around, maybe Spark it just doing that so he can go and answer lip. Here's another Ant Matrix, you need to fear these right clicks from Sparker in this instance. Stalker, oh he had to dupe the Ryan there, he was very low, he, he got to wrap around. He got slept, so I, I think, uh, or he got knocked down so he wasn't able to contest the point. Miss me with that! That's not enough! The Ryan just get mulched! Yes, I know with how fast these points tick up on Flashpoint. You got to think if you're the Atlanta Reign, do you do you get in here and maybe get another fight lip coming from that outside? But as that point's ticking up, do you even consider just yeah, forcing to give this one up? Who would win? One cybernetically enhanced soldier or one Wally boy? Because it comes down now. Sparker gets that ultimate set up here and Fielder's already MIA. Orc was at least able to find Admiral here, but Hardy's working with a Shatter and the comfort of playing from behind this sim wall. Somebody's kind of come and challenge the point. Somebody's got to step up! It'll be Hawk in the end as Hardy looks to charge forward. And there's not a thing he can do. That's first cap. London Spitfire. I mean, they used a uh, Meteor Strike, Duplicate Rush there. As look at this, Spitfire, you're going to have your sound barrier here for this next point. I mean, you are in a prime position to get control of this first. Lander approach this fight now, switching to the Sojourn for Lip. 
Another powerful pick in his hands. But nothing has worked so far in this series for Lip. Shorka hardly outperforming him either. Echo was under constant poke pressure, never at more than half health. Hardy is threatening. Key posing from the sideline. Backbone waiting for a wall. Shio should be able to switch up out of it. It's going to be a nano boost to Doof. He's coming in, but Hawk has to back away instantly. It's a Blizzard in play. Rail guns getting fired off by Lippy, but how do you get value out of the nano? Hawk just had to leave the fight. Backbone pushes up, and Stalker gets an Iceborne lobotomy. Bro, I mean, they have been able, I feel like, to find picks on Stalker pretty much at will at the beginning of these fights. As, as soon as he gets low to the ground, it is either Backbone or land and find those first bloods. Hardy without Shatter here. Atlanta Rain, though, already used that nano. A long way from Kitsune Rush here, and there is an Amp Matrix ready to go. Look at all the turrets just tickling Hawk. He's not a fan. Somewhere my prediction, King Danny Landon. What a save. And I told you so. Is you're already, you're gonna get, I mean, this is like close with how fast he's tick up. I mean, bro, this is not. You are not prepared. This is like not becoming not close. Stalker has to back away here. Another dupe, so perhaps can play somewhat more aggressively. Does get Sparker there. That's a huge pick. You think you can go in on that? So you have basically everybody there because Hawk just came back. Man, it's gotta be now. It's gotta be now. Stalker's gonna make his way in from the side. Is it a support dupe? Is he trying to get the Reinhardt copy? Admiral wards him off with a boop. Stalker takes his time. 99 to 0 here. The Atlanta Rain have to make the move, and so they do. It's Landon cut down by the focusing beam. Hardy will trade blows with Hawk on the point here. But the Spitfire don't have a great reason to stall unless they think they can win the fight. And it looks like that's out of the question. Uh, you get 99, you get Sound Barrier again, you back up, you, you do another fight as... Uh, the, the one thing that changes there for the rain, right? It, it's something they really haven't done all series. It's like, they're able to get Landon really early on. I mean, Landon has been able to stay alive in these fights. Think back to Blizzard World, right? You know, they've had a really tough time punishing him. He's doing a great job staying alive. Uh, in that time, they're actually able to get Hawk into the back lane. They deal with the Immortality Field and get the kill on the Baptiste. Here's the Spitfire now. It's a wall thrown out from the point. Geo trying to play from the off angle here. There's a main wall in play. It's going to be Hawk with that uppercut. going to come down with that Meteor Strike. It's a sound barrier in play for the Spitfire, though. Admiral fights the timing, but Lip fights the headshot. Backbone goes down to the railgun, but Hawk wants a bit more. He'll force the Spitfire to wake here, and this should be enough to have them reset. Yeah, so what, you have overclock for this next fight. You ended up using a ton there for the rain. Uh, Nano, Katsune Rush, Duplicate, Meteor Strike. London, what do you do? Ant Matrix, you kind of force them into one area. You could Blizzard that area. You could TP Blizzard. You know, there's a lot of different variation they could use off of this. They wrap around. It's going to be an Ant Matrix in the window now. Railgun skittering past them, but the Spitfire are unperturbed. Has to be an early immortality field here for Landon and Lip ain't missing right now. Hardy though in his face. Obscures much of his vision for the rest of the Spitfire team. And Lip sitting on a big rail here. 99 plays 99, but Stalker is brought down by Landon. And they flip the point. Now it's on the rain. What can they do here? A field around of the picture. Shout out for Hardy. He wants to close on the back line here. Maybe Bane Hawk's movement out a little bit more. It's Lip finding a rail kill, but it's far, far from enough. I mean, it's Hog and Shio later. Dude, they just bullied them off of the point. Back into that choke just by Hardy at that central pillar. Nice ant matrix up on that high ground. Uh, I really like the use, you know, Lando when he saw the overclock come out. They get that immortality field around the corner. They actually almost got it, I don't know if you saw it, but like Hawk actually punched a few players from the side out into the open past the immortality field. Lip was not able to hit any of the shots and able to get right back in there, play behind that ant matrix. Hardy's eyebrows there at risk of disappearing into his hairline if he had one after that fight. You're a little surprised at the Spitfire having to take that so comfortably. London, move into position to try and cap the shadow. Hawk wasn't ready for that one. Blink and you miss it. He's knocked down, but the follow-up though, not enough. Durable as Hawk was, eventually he'll be carved out of formation. And now guess what? There's another amp matrix and Landon, he's got an itchy trigger finger. And I think if you're the Spitfire, you have so much confidence at this point. You have seen the Atlanta Rain play just about everything and it not work. That you feel like you are in in prime position to take this series. I'm sure the rest of the team still in it are also pretty happy. Like, oh man, is it, are they going to really do it? 
Stalker instantly goes into Ice Block here. The Maywall's gonna come down. He's gonna be caught in the Blizzard. Tries to pop up over it, but it's knocked out. A duplicate almost instantly. Lip can only play from the periphery here, and Spark is able to fight him. How? Through the air Matrix with a right click, I think. Immortality filled in play, and he is that sound barrier. Oh, you've got everything you need and more. The Atlanta Rain have been torn limb from limb. You have one more fight for the Atlanta Rain potentially in their season. Stalker over to the Genji just to get back. Hawk, he's stuck! He can't get to the point, it's gonna be lit! Oh, it's not enough! They came from Ash, and to Ash they return! The Atlanta Rain have been slain! The echoes of glory, no longer just a whisper for the Spitfire! They will advance! In your lower brackets. And you don't get 3-0'd by accident or by chance or by luck. I mean, that was that was a team who came in prepared, knew exactly how they were going to play against a team that looked like they were searching for answers the entire time. Probably still a little bit shocked after their loss of Spark the other day. But to come in and lose 3-0, I mean, that is something nobody expected. The Atlanta Reign sat out of the play-ins. They'd already qualified. Yeah. They had the time to sit, strategize, practice, and watch the rest of the field vie for a chance to be here. And after one of the most dominant years we've ever seen from an Overwatch League franchise, they are headed home. Yeah, that's the London Spitfire. Through the LCQ, through the play-ins, they make it on through past the Atlanta Reign. This team, the Atlanta Reign, lost 12 games all year. They just lost six straight to go home. I mean, that is something I don't think anyone would have predicted. I mean, that is just, uh, hey, like, you get you get these games, people turn up on a weekend, you got to play good for four days, right? I mean, uh, London could be a team. I don't think anyone wants to play them now. Maybe the Boston Uprising. The Boston Uprising doesn't seem to have their number, but nobody else, I think, wants to see this Spitfire team. And it's having there's a good chance that Boston don't have to worry yeah. about them for the time being. They've kind of gotten that one out of the way already. What a team. What a run that is beginning here. The player of the match, presented by Trimble Divine, AMD is Hardy. I, I mean, look, had a really good series on the Reinhardt, where they're using the charge to actually just create space for separation, you know, just cause a little bit of chaos. Uh, I, I thought Hadi played great. I actually think, you know, the supports on the Atlanta Rain are so good. I thought Landed was massive in this series on the Baptiste. I thought he had a tremendous game. But man, you see some of these big shatters at the biggest moment. Hadi able to stay alive, knows how to play against all these different tanks in this meta. The Spitfire already breaking the core tenets about how so many teams approach competitive Overwatch. It's all about being flexible, having a deep roster, being able to adjust to metagames as they change. The Spitfire buck that trend and say, no, we have one style. We're going to do one thing. It's Telegraph. You're going to see it coming, and you're not going to be able to do a thing about it. And, I mean, you see, like, not many teams. I mean, think about this series. How many different heroes have we seen Lit and Stalker try and play? It felt like they played like the whole roster in terms of DPS. Uh, you know, you got Donghagen playing Ball and Winston and all these different heroes. Uh, and nothing worked. They were never able to find a solution that worked to beat the London Spitfire, which is just crazy to say. I mean, London's a fantastic team. But Atlanta is the team we expected to be there you know, in the finals, at least. I think a bunch of us have kind of like been on the, the mayhem uh, bandwagon coming up. But man, that is a series I don't think anyone would have predicted going that way. There's something magic about being here at our playoffs. Something a little bit different. The London Spitfire look ready to capitalize on just that feeling. Don't go too far. We're going to head down and have Golden Boy on the stage give us a post-match interview. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Give it up for the London Spitfire. Oh my word, unbelievable stuff. And I'm of course here with the man of the hour, Hottie. What an incredible, <laughs> incredible run you guys are going on right now. Firstly, how does it feel to come to this event knowing that the odds were definitely stacked against you and yet you just came out here and decided to do it your way? Uh, we're really happy about that. I the whole play and run, no in playoffs, everything's just amazing for us. We're just happy to be here, honestly, and just, we're just having fun. We're just yeah. having fun. Hey, 
I think it looks like it. It looks like it. Now, obviously, as we look at the series and, 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 and things started off, you know, obviously on control, we were seeing you really do the thing that we know you could do on map one. But then we go over to Blizzard World, and it really did feel as if this was, uh, it, like, you guys coming alive, realizing not only can we beat them in this map, but we can beat them in this series. Is that kind of the vibe that you guys got after map two? Yeah, I, I think, too, we load into map one, and we all just see we're all playing really well. Like, everyone individually, like, Backbone is hitting insane amount of shots. Yeah. Everyone is hitting crazy shots. Landon, best Baptiste in the world. Everyone's hitting <laughs> the shots. So we just, we just knew we could win for sure. But then I think Blizzard World, it, a lot of our strategy comes in because yeah. of Coach Christopher and uh, Coach Commander X as well, all our coaching staff. We have such amazing strategy. We have everything planned out for yeah. every map. And I think there just comes that coach gap into, into effect, really. Yeah. Well, I think uh, y'all definitely did it for Danny. That's number of one. Of course we did for <laughs> Danny. Did. Danny's the only believer. <laughs> I don't know, though. You got a couple believers yeah, out here, man. right? We have a couple of real ones. Except that guy over Except there. That guy. That guy. Oh yeah. man, that the guy. Thing is, I'm playing, right? I'm playing, and I see two two signs full flaming me, and it's just like <laughs> I'm just trying my best over here. Right? <laughs> He's trying his best, man. Come on, <laughs> move this man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Hadi, before I let you go, go celebrate with your team. A huge accomplishment here today. Uh, but is this is this it? Is this London Spitfire finally, like, hitting not just a level you knew you were capable of going, but just going even further than that and, and potentially even winning a world championship? I, I really think so. I really think we can do it. It's like versus Boston, I think we underperform. We play bad. I shatter some walls. <laughs> So, you did shatter a few walls so, and some wind. And <laughs> shatter the air molecules, then it's, it's hard to win. But if we all play better, if I play better, like if we play like we played here, I think we can really go far. Hey, man. I think a lot of people want to see that as well. Adi, appreciate you, my brother. Always a pleasure. We're going to send it back over to the desk as we break down this epic matchup. But guys, give it up one more time for the Spitfire. Thank you. Dagger, Dagger. Yeah. Stagger, Dagger. 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 Stagger, Dag
Jay, can I once again present you with the thesis of good vibes? We're seeing the Hangzhou <laughs> Spark vibing out with Chai playing the Snowball. And then they're vibing? No, not on Spitfire. They're vibing. They're playing their own game. They're teleporting around the map. Hadi just having an absolute field day. And the Atlanta Rain, they didn't have the answer. We talked about Boston Uprising and their Arisa composition. Atlanta Rain, even though Hawk came in as a sub and had pretty good Doomfist play, this was all about the Lono Spitfire doing it for Danny. I saw that, I saw that right after. And then, uh, London, thank you so much. Keep doing it for me. I think this one worked. So just keep saying, do it, do it for Danny up until you guys win it all. There we go. A true fan, a true believer, and why not? Let's take a look at the bracket to see what else will be standing in London's wow. way in order to take it all. They are currently, of course, waiting for the loser of Uprising and Spark. If we're looking at those two teams, which of these would London rather face off against? Well, no, probably not Bondon. I, I know Spark. Right? Well, yeah, you don't Spark, want to play Boston. I would say. You don't want to play Boston. Yeah. Well, you I mean, yeah, play. yeah, I think. I think for me as a London fan, I would want them to go up against Boston again. Oh, you're confident? Really? I, yeah. I mean, you, you guys they face their London now. beat Atlanta right now. Sure. I mean, they lost to Boston twice, but like Zoe said, it's their third time's a charm. Yeah. Yeah. And they're gonna have to face them anyways. I feel like even Atlanta, if they move on. Atlanta played a great dive. It just didn't like London was so ready for a dive matchup. I feel like if Spark comes down to face London, they have to be worried. I mean, maybe they could write it off and say Atlanta messed up, but Atlanta's a great dive team. Spark is too. London wants that matchup again. I mean, what they just showed was incredibly dominant. They're like, yeah, give me a rematch. Like, try again, Spark. Maybe you guys can do it. Like, I think they want that. I think it's the Smurf Arissa, it's the Decay Genji, the Lee Jagon Lucio. Those have been the tools so far, have been the only answers for London in the playoffs. I will actually say, because of the uniqueness of this meta and this playoffs, you don't need to defeat Boston Uprising. Let, let, let Florida, Florida Mayhem can take care of them. Can the Houston Outlaws? We don't gotta defeat Boston Uprising. We'd rather play the Hangzhou Spark and maybe Dallas Fuel, Houston Outlaws. Those are the kind of teams we want to face up against. We don't have to beat the Boston Uprising to win this championship. I mean, one thing we know is that when we get to see London on that stage again, entertainment is guaranteed. The crowd is behind them, and for good reason. What characters we have there and what fantastic gameplay they've been showing us so far. But I do want to take a second here and also, of course, give a huge shout out to the Atlanta Reign, the entire team, yeah. that org, that squad. They have been looking as dominant as any team can throughout the regular season. They did not drop matches up until the very end on the hand of Florida Mayhem and Houston Outlaws, but they have been showcasing excellent Overwatch and only fall short right before the finish line. They lost, what, two maps in the yeah, spring stage? which is I, incredible. That is incredible feats and nothing to scoff at. Yeah, that's one of the most dominant, like, half seasons we've seen in the Overwatch League, right? And they ex experted the Sombra composition. It is the Reinhardt meta, you gotta beat this if you want to compete at the highest level. You need to have the answer, and Atlanta Rain didn't, but I don't think that negates how good they were when it came down to the Winston compositions this year. Yeah, I want to see more from Atlanta Rain, but we won't. And that's how it has to be. That's how it has to be. We have to send these teams home for a champion to be crowned, and so Blood as Danny. sad as it is to Blood. see them go, we need... You see me smiling? To, Carnage. We need to, <laughs> because somebody's got to be yeah. the last man standing at the end of the day, and right now, I feel like London Spitfire, they look like a real contender. They're vibing. I doubt it, I doubt it, and I doubt it, but eh, the, the proof is in the pudding. I, I can't argue anymore. Well, then let's see where your pred goes when they're up again. But for now, they get to rest, and so do we. We're heading into a very short break, and when we come back, we're going to break down the action of the next game. So stick around. Party's not mid.